Hey everyone, Rob here, and I got some more updates on the earthquakes that have been going on around Iceland, specifically in Kelir. And what I've done is I've, I've begun to start collecting some of this data on the earthquakes in particular in the Kelir area and decided to start plotting them into Excel and taking a look at some of the data that's coming in. Some of you might be looking at this and think this is the, the most boring thing in the world, but the meteorological office only provides 48 hours worth of data from what I can tell. If, if you know a way of getting more, actually, just put it in the comments because that would be great. So what I started to do is I started to save each day, put it into Excel, and I'm starting to build a couple different charts here, as you can see. The one on the left here has to do with the magnitude. So we're looking at how powerful each of these earthquakes are. And you can see very clearly, there's just a couple of days, so no big revelations here, but over the past couple of days, we can see this dotted trend line is starting to go upwards. Overall, over the last few days, the earthquakes are seemingly getting more powerful where before they were averaging, you know, closer to a magnitude of one. And now we're inching up to a 1.5 and we're getting more and more of these three pluses over the last 24 hours. And I'm going to be going over to that in just a minute. But then we take a look at the earthquake depth. And this one here is a little bit harder to see. But all in all, let me just see if we can zoom in here a little bit more. We can see that the trend line is pretty much staying consistent. So the actual depth that these earthquakes are occurring, which apparently is, is a very key factor in determining whether or not an eruption is going to take place or not. But the depth is around six kilometers deep, you know, sort of hovering between that five, six kilometers. So as of right now, it doesn't look like there's really that much going on in terms of uh in terms of the depth i mean as you can see the trend line is is pretty flat but we'll i'll keep an eye on this and i'll keep adding in in the data as the days go along to see if we start seeing some sort of trend being created so let's jump over to some of the other stuff that i wanted to talk about and first things first is i want to look at some of the raw data now i know a lot of you maybe go to this website it's a uh, weather is and then it's the Icelandic meteorological website and it's a great resource to be able to very quickly see through some of the graphs that they have here over you know Sunday Monday and you know looking at some of the information that they have we can see that there are more and more of these spikes of a, a value of three and these stars here on this map actually show you that's the identifying of a magnitude of over three. So if you start seeing a lot of stars, which we saw at the beginning of the last eruption, that's I guess currently ongoing, there was a lot of these green stars and the more and more that we see these, I think the more likely something's, uh, something bigger is gonna happen, perhaps an eruption. So looking at the data here, let me just switch this over to English for you. We can see that larger than three, six of them over the last 48 hours, and in total, there have been 242. Now, the last eruption, the one that's going on, we were getting thousands and thousands of earthquakes every day. So having just only a couple hundred is, is pretty good so far. But as we were looking at some of the trend lines, perhaps we're getting more frequency. Maybe that's another thing I should start looking at as well is keeping track of the total per day. And if that's going up, then perhaps we're getting we're getting something as well. But taking a quick look at some of the numbers, we can see here the size. You know, overall, it's been pretty calm. Today, we did have one that was around 3.0, and you can see that one occurred just around 4, 4.20-ish. And then uh, we had a couple other ones throughout the last 24 hours that were getting a bit bigger, but nothing that I've felt in the city. So I wanted to show you some of this. Check out this website. Let's, I'll keep an eye on, on this and put the data in so that we can all stay up to date and enjoy some of the uh you know some of these these charts that i got going on that i'm starting to put together one other thing i wanted to show you before we sort of close up this video is and this is uh, i know it's a bit of a hot topic but mbf mbl.is now they have on their website and i believe it's on youtube as well they have a webcam that is pointed towards the kayla area now they're a little bit touchy when it comes to using their their webcam footage so that's why i have the roof one going on on my channel and that's that's for the current eruption but this one here if you are interested in keeping an eye on this 
then go check this out, mbl.is, or check it on YouTube. It's on their YouTube page as well. I believe they got a bunch of webcams, but this might be a good place to start keeping an eye on if you're a volcano or an eruption enthusiast and you want to be the first to see it go, this might be the place to do it. So definitely check that out. But that's it. That's all I got. I hope you enjoyed some of these graphs. I'm going to be keeping that up to date. So be sure to like and subscribe to let me know that you, well, and comment if you don't like it, if you think it's pointless. And uh, if you know of a better way of getting the data rather than me just kind of going in every day and grabbing it manually, please let me know because, um, yeah, I'm always up for an easier way of doing things. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, thank you so much for watching.